This month's team brief comes from the Wrightington Therapy Department and I'm going to be meeting the therapy lead, Annette Sands, shortly. I'm going to be asking her about the department and, as usual, we'll have the three quiz questions. First of all, roughly how many patients will be coming through the department today? Secondly, which members of the team here are part of a brass band? And thirdly, who went on a canoe trip with Ray Mears? It's important to start with acknowledging that the Trust has been under a lot of pressure, particularly over Christmas and into the first part of the new year. And this pressure has been felt on beds, in the A&E department, on diagnostics, and on all of the departments which support unscheduled care. And we're beginning to reach the conclusion that the pressures have resulted in some of the decline in some of our major measures of quality in the organisation. Simply overcrowding in the trust leads to less good performance on quality. So for example, if we look at MRSA, we proudly went two years without a single case of MRSA, and then in the last couple of months we've had two cases, although each instance there was a particularly good reason for it. But if we look at C. diff, last year for the whole year there were 12 cases of C. diff, but if you see the chart here, we've had 20 so far this year. But again, pleased to repeat that only three of these were due to internal lapses in care. Let's look now at the chart for mortality, something we've been really good at for many years, and you can see here three months on the trot where we are above 100. And again, it's easy to form the conclusion that the pressures in the system are causing a decline of these measures. Now let's talk about the number of serious harms. And you can see here that in many ways it's been a good month because there were no never events, no pressure ulcers, no serious falls, and no cases of ventilator-acquired pneumonia. But the number of infections stands at 12, and that equates to the total number of harms, the same figure as for the previous month. Another measure that's not been going the right way is VTE risk assessment. And if you look at the chart here, you can see in April, May and June that we were comfortably achieving our target of 95%, but that after that it falls away dramatically. Now this is not because of overcrowding, it's because of the introduction of the new HIS system. And we've now got a fix in place, which means that we should be picking up this record from now on. So I'm expecting to see an improvement in these figures. Now, despite these measures that have been going the wrong way, here's one set of measures that are going the right way. So these are the self-reported patient metrics of how well people feel looked after inside the organisation. And you can see that December is one of the best months we've ever had. So what this says to me is that despite all the pressures in the system, you are still giving patients the most fantastic level of care and they are really appreciating that. So thank you very much. Now for our main measures of performance, and I'm pleased to say that December was a good month financially, with a trading surplus in month of just over £2 million, taking us to a surplus for the year to nearly £3 million, and releasing our share of the Sustainability and Transformation Fund. Now, although this looks extremely good, there are a couple of problems here. One is that we underachieved on CIP by £500,000 in month, and the second is that we had to release a lot of our reserves in order to achieve this position. Now, the remaining three months of the year are absolutely crucial and it's really important that we stick with our financial discipline. So here's the A&E chart, which you've seen many times before, and the pattern is rather familiar. None of the trusts in Greater Manchester are achieving the 95% target, and in fact, over the winter months, all of them have been suffering a decline in performance. And yet, if you look at us, we are still the best performing trust in Greater Manchester for the year to date. And I'm pleased to say that we're continuing to meet all of our other major targets. So 18 weeks, diagnostics and cancer. So once again, many thanks to everybody. Something else that I'm really pleased with is the Bright Ideas Scheme. And in this, you've been coming up with some brilliant ideas. For example, reviewing the use of tetanus prophylaxis in A&E an idea to save money on faxes in the administrative area, and how to reduce the cost of booking travel and accommodation. These are all bright ideas that have come from you and are helping us to achieve our financial objectives. So if you've got any more bright ideas, you can go to the relevant page, it's Bright Ideas, and it's on the internet, and submit your suggestions. Now, something else that gives me great grounds for optimism is the groundbreaking deal that we have done with our main CCG in Wigan, for a block contract for the next two years. 
This means that in two years' time, we'll have the same level of income as this year, and next year we'll have an increase in our income. But because of the increase in inflation and other pressures on the system, we will still have to make reductions in costs, and the executive directors have come up with 15 schemes to do this, which we'll be publicising shortly. But the good news is that our absolute level of income is guaranteed, and there are no contract penalties for the next two years. So we have a period of significant security in which we can adjust to this new regime. You'll be finding out a lot more about this over the next few weeks. Here I am with Annette Sands, who's the lead therapist for the department and who has worked at Wigan and Wrightington for 27 years. And in fact, Annette is retiring at the end of March this year. So Annette, first of all, tell me what are the main things that happen here? Okay, we have about 65 therapy staff based at Wrightington. We have physiotherapists, occupational therapists, and we have a podiatrist. And we also have a team of support staff. We have clerical staff and we have therapy staff that support the work that we do. And we actually cover the areas of rheumatology, orthopaedics, and women's health. Okay, and, and what are the main problems and pressures that you face? Um, the main pressures, I would say, are seeing the outpatients in a timely manner. Mm. Um, we have limited capacity really to see all the patients that we'd like to see. Patients come from quite a long distance to come and get therapy and sometimes we're not always able to see them all. Um, if we had more staff or better facilities we could actually see a lot more people going through the department. I see, okay. And, and with all that pressure, what are you most proud of? I'm proud of lots of things, I'm particularly proud of the staff. The staff are really hard working, they're dedicated, um, they're very experienced staff. A lot of them have been here for quite a number of years, so they have a lot of experience to pass on to be able to treat the patients. I'm also really proud of the fact that patients um, raised money for our new pool, which opened in 2015. Um, so that's a really good opportunity for the patients. Mm -hmm. So the patients actually give us very good compliments throughout the years and we get very little complaints. So we're really, really proud of the staff and the patients that come here. Well, that's a very good measure of how popular you are. So now let's move on to the three quiz questions. So first of all, on a typical day like today, roughly how many patients will be coming through the department? Um, we'd probably have about 170 patients coming through the department to see all the therapies. Mm. Um, so yeah, about 170 in okay. a day. And you have some talented members of the department who are part of a brass band. Who's that? Uh, we have at least three members of a brass band. There's Robert Conlon, who is one of the specialist physios. There's Margaret Pilkington, another specialist physio, and one of the physiotherapists, Ma Matthew Faramond, who also plays in a brass band. OK. And then most exotic of all, who spent time in a canoe with Ray Mears, and how did that all come about? Uh, that was uh, one of our specialist physios. That's Jo Armstrong. She won a competition to go to Canada and spend time a week with Ray Mears. Um, so she's, she absolutely loved that experience. 